liberty seized by the throat. It's a title. In reality, that's not quite it. Yes, perhaps it's liberty. Perhaps that's what Miss de Mayol called it. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure it's the official title. Our Venus. Venus is much prettier. God created women's breasts in such a way that women could be picked up there and set upright. Here, the first pictures are shy. It's a rather long-distance treatment. And as I realized that these people were not disagreeable, that on the contrary, it seemed to amuse them to see that a photographer was recording this scene, I approached progressively. That there's a fellow who's got hold of her by the hip. And then afterward, of course, Miles' model was there, giving advice on how to orient the statue Here's the woman in good spirits. Well, of course, it's an easy effect, placing the woman between the statue's legs, her own legs, when she was young. And here they are. They continue. She moves away, a bit more in silhouette. She judges the lighting, and she appears in the foreground wearing a leopard coat. And then, little by little, an audacity takes hold of me, and I approach even closer. This picture here wasn't bad, of the hand, with the fellow suspenders running down his back, tightly gripping the woman. Short rest. And then that's it. They judged the statue's vertical aspect. That fellow there gives his opinion. And finally we arrive at this first photograph, the one which seems to me the most representative. There's motion, composition in the form of the letter A. Quite good, that. Well, I was finally satisfied. This one, this photograph here of the accordionist, I call it, well, in the context, I name it, in short, the music lover killers. I chose this one, you see, because apart from the waiter who's doing the washing up, all of the faces Converge towards the young woman. And so these fellows arrived, covered with blood. And then the girl played a song. I still remember the song. It was called, You Can't Imagine How Much I Love You. It's so nice to be embraced. And then these fellows, who had just been butchering animals, were completely taken by the melody. While she, she had a distant air about her. Contemptuous. Kind of a queen. I don't know if I began with a close-up, or if I took the overall scene with the singer who was called Lulu, a singer who sang down to earth, jean Berthe Silva. And then you see, there she is again, Madame Lulu, with those fellows watching her. It's not bad, but there's too much confusion. It's yet another confused photograph, reaching for simplicity. Well, then here's a fellow taken from the back. I like the handsome shape of his apron. We back up. And here, this one's almost successful, except that someone's not at all interested in the music. To arrive finally at this one again, here, the faces slowly turn, slowly, and then, that's it. There's a single moment, a fraction of a second, where everything comes together. This photograph of a young woman was taken at the Beau Rouge, Lap Street. I call it Anita. That's all I know about her. I never saw her again. Suddenly, just like that, she herself proposed to take off the little jacket she was wearing, and she appeared with bare shoulders. Also, the position of her arms was very, very symmetric, like that. It's very pretty, except for the hand. I would have liked the hand outstretched, but then perfection's not of this world, thank God, and the hand remains a hand. And before taking off her jacket, she was much more anonymous. Here she is then, with her black garment, and the arms are missing. Yes, it's obvious there's, there's an element missing here. First, of course, before I approached her, I took a more general view of all the young girls waiting for their escorts, with the reflection of their legs on the floor, which was, which seemed quite pretty. All of those legs are reflecting, very pretty. 
I did well to wait and have the audacity to ask her, Do you mind if? Yes. And then she herself took off her little jacket, and with that the chrysalis opened and the butterfly appeared. This picture was taken, indeed this series of pictures was taken, following a coach tour. I had signed up for a tour of Paris by night. Everyone got out of the coach, all squeezed together, and entered a place called the Petit Balcon, a doubtful pun. A scene representing a Java Vash dance. In other words, there are a pair of dancers, and at a certain moment the man throws his companion to the floor, she then seeks refuge among the spectator's feet. It was at this moment then that the photograph was taken. First I made several unfortunate attempts, then several not quite successful ones. Here she is sitting on some people's laps, but it's still very confusing. Here, an outright close-up, but it's becoming a bit vulgar, doesn't succeed. Here we achieve the necessary reserve between the actress and the spectator, who in fact is participating in the show given the gentleman's slightly amused air and the lady's rather irritated expression. She's just a little undressed, which contrasts well with the perfect tourist in his rather strict suit. She's resigned. Imagine being thrown to the floor 15 times in one evening. Hmm? Not much fun. No, no, she's a little tired, bruised, scarred. Something tragic about all of this. This photograph, I call it Papa. Papa. It was the gondola festival at Choisy-le-Roi. I think it was some kind of chariot contest, decorated chariots. And so there was this man with an old toy car which he had made into an airplane for his son. And you know, this must be one of the oldest photographs I've taken. Must be in 30, 31, and at that time we were very economical with film. First of all, it was a Roliflex with six poses, so you triggered only when you felt really good. First I took a shot of the couple, a father and son, passing in front of some buildings. But it's very confusing because the public merges in from the background. It doesn't have that feeling of solitude that I finally recovered later. Here they're still lost in the crowd, and it's still confusing. There we begin to separate them. There the two with respect to the setting. But the setting doesn't have much interest here, it's banal. Whereas here, the Mimil Pavilion, in the background, lots of space. The couple solitude. They're completely unaware of the, the mockery one could make of them. In any case, I was much more mischievous at that time than I am now. It seemed to me that I was more cruel. I still had a touch of childhood cruelty to take a picture like that. So full of mockery. She finally wears away somewhat with time. Leaving only this tender and rather touching scene. This starts at Hébert Square, a day which doesn't seem to be going well at all. We begin taking pictures nervously, because we've come, so we say to ourselves, I must accomplish something, so we start taking street pictures which don't hold together, which are poorly constructed, poor scenery. And then later, the kid, we say now that's starting to look interesting because he's carrying a cardboard rifle on his back, he looks about, here, there, as if he was going to go underwater hunting with the... Oh, yes. And then later on, the boy and the girl holding a small child by the hand. And then I got fed up, a bit discouraged. I turned my back on the little square there. They walked into it. They came and placed themselves inside the viewfinder, but exactly as I would have wished them to be placed. I think they're hardly even aware of me. They don't see me. The boy is totally indifferent. Little girl, and that, that's a fortunate picture, hmm? It's like that. It arranges itself like a bouquet, hmm? 
You place the flowers like so, and then the bouquet takes care of arranging itself. And there's the V. Always the letter V. The V. The lines of the police alarm. The background. And the kids who come and place themselves at the centre of this sort of angle. There's no merit in that. Just being there. To me, the postern of the poplars, that's a pretty name, the postern of the poplars. So I like the setting. I'd already begun photographing that dead tree which was completely stripped, and then some kids came to play. Well, they started to play there in the distance, like that. Then they began jumping over the mounds. I waited through five pictures. I had to take six to get that kid jumping like that, the posture. And it wasn't easy to take because films weren't very sensitive and that, judging from the sharpness, was at one hundredth of a second, which was already quite good. And here, everything's rather well arranged, with the tree in the centre, this ridiculous house on the left, and the silhouette flashing in the sky. I don't know if I noticed that when I took the photograph. Once again, it's good fortune. Once again, I waited. When people talk to me about picture hunters, I very quietly laugh, because I'm not a hunter of pictures, I'm a fisher of pictures. And in the case of the painting in the shop window, it's not rod and reel fishing where one's running after trout. No, it's cane pole fishing. It was in 47, I believe. She was making a bit of a scandal, this woman in black stockings showing her derriere. And from the shop window, one saw people filing by, who were rather often scandalised. And then this couple came in, the lady very interested in the profile of a vase in front of her, and she was examining the vase with interest, while the gentleman was taking a very sidelong glance at, how should we say, convex side of the woman. And so in the end, it was the sidelong glance. That's what interested me. But it's a question of luck. You wait, of course, but you have to be lucky enough to stumble onto this expression, because all the other photographs are really very nice, but this one is more powerful. This final photo. There weren't many like this one. There was only one. The Craftsman's Courtyard. Well, I call this one the Craftsman's Courtyard. It's in the 19th quarter of Paris. And it's a picture that seems to me very curious, very, very bizarre. If I had had the models at my disposal, I would never have arranged them like that. I would have approached much closer to the woman in order to get a bust shot of her. I would have my four characters in the background on the left. But this, this proportion here is a revelation to me. Um, a photographic chance. And it's not bad in the end. It's going off in all directions, this photo. The chap on the left is completely out of the action. The fellow hiding in the corner. It's really very, very strange, this story. I don't understand. I don't understand how I could use, how I could learn something from this photo. And indeed, it's put together poorly. There's the foreground. One always avoids placing a diagonal line like that at the bottom. And yet it works, anyway. Afterwards, she runs away. Hmm? It's no longer any good at all. Whereas here, at the time, I must have liked it more. A cluster of humans there. And it's less successful. It's much more predictable, more common. Old hat, what? Whereas that one, no. Sometimes photography is bizarre, just bizarre. I used to try to take photos which were completely closed, which were, which contained within themselves a complete little story, concentrated, condensed. Now, it's enough to plant a little seed in people's heads, and that's enough.